guys and welcome back to another Napoleon Total War online battle and today we have the Blitz at Ligny. I am playing France and my opponent Vasco uh, is playing the Russians and this was a fantastic battle, a good bit of cat and mouse. So let's first go over the uh, army compositions. We will have to pause it because it starts very quickly. My French army consists of Four of the wonderful chasseurs, four of the Swiss foot, um, one old guard, the glorious old guard, one young guard, and I believe a unit of fusiliers of the line, the standard line infantry. Uh, and then we have two six pounder horse artillery, which actually proved quite crucial in this battle, one way or the other. And four chasseurs à cheval. Um, now across the pond, across the, the river, we have the Russians with two six-pounder foot artillery. Um, two lifeguard foot. Four of the musketeers in this mess down here, guys. As you can see. Uh, and he has uh, the 17th Jaeger Regiment as well as three of the Russian Jaegers. On top of that... He does have a unit of militia, the Olpel Shenny. I don't know how to say that, but the Olpel Shenny. And then his horse force is actually quite unique. He has three units of the Ulans, the glorious lancers in the Russian army. He has a hussar unit, looking very nice. Some lifeguard hussars. Look at these boys, the elites, ready to go to battle. And he has a cuirassier, very strong, heavy cavalry unit. Look at that fancy moustache. He is ready to go. And my initial plan was to hold the river, come across right, and flank around this side. But as you can see, that plan is probably not going to go to plan. Because he is sending an absolutely monumental force across this river, forcing a crossing... And obviously, we start right up here. So it's closer for him to get across this river. And it is a very good play by him. So I brought my chasseur à cheval to try and uh, combat this. As you can see, um, I was bringing my cannons down. I was bringing everything down. I thought he was going to go for my cannons. But as you can see, we needed to get going. As the Russian Jaegers open up on my six-pounder horse artillery. Here come the chasseurs, ready to fight. Ready to fire their shots into the enemy. Here they come. And I was moving my infantry up into position as well. And my cannons were down here. I was very worried about them. I thought they might, you know, get absolutely smashed here. But no. Luckily, the great cavalry force is going. The great cavalry fight. Look at the ch chasseur à cheval firing into the enemy. And we are starting to win this cavalry engagement. But of course, he has his three cavalry across this side as well. We had to be careful of that. After that, decided to try and push these Russian forces back. But as you can see, as you can see, it does work slightly. But it's just chaos, chaos at this point in the battle. And he's got his Russian Jaegers firing in from this side. And he's bringing his musketeers back. He's bringing his general to try and stop any routes, which does work. And as you can see, they were just out of range of my canister shot here. So I needed to bring this uh, cannon unit up slightly closer. But the idea is getting the canister shot ready to go firing into the enemy and I really just left my cavalry in there for much too long I should have disengaged as soon as we destroyed their cavalry because as you can see my cavalry are getting shredded here Get absolutely shredded so we needed to remove them and as you can see they start to run that was a big mistake on my part over here though Over here, though, I was firing into these guys with canister shot. But I forgot to turn it back onto round shot. But it didn't really matter too much. There wasn't that big a, uh, a problem there. 
And this cannon is just going to cover this crossing. If they want to try and cross the crossing, that's fine. And I forgot that I had a fusilier of the line in this building. And he destroys that unit completely. Which was a big mistake by me. It's weird though how uh, your buildings get destroyed with 50%. And as you can see, it's just chaos down on this right flank. Enemies everywhere. Fighting each other. And this old guard is walking through the through towards the enemy for some reason. But he does decide to return back across the river with a few troops. At this point, you can see the Swiss foot firing into the building. Not doing huge amounts of damage. But just keeping them pinned down on this left flank. And at this point, I really should have focused that building. I don't know where this old guard was going. Like, what was going on with these guys? But as you can see, he's bringing his... Uh... And this is a crucial moment in the battle, guys. This six-pounder horse artillery got completely glitched out. They wouldn't move. I was even putting them onto melee to try and get them to run off the cannons and retake the cannons up. But they could not move. And if they were able to uh, move, this might have been a different battle. It was that bad. It's a really, really poor thing. I was going to bring them up here. And if we'd have brought them up here and got canister shot on, they would probably have not been able to cross this river and these guys would have been surrounded. So unfortunately, we lost the, the these cannons completely. And at this point, I probably should have brought this cannon across. Look at them firing away. Absolutely superb. Look at the chasseurs. They're firing into a bit of a hill though. That is one of the problems we have here. You can see the fields are dead. Look at these guys. Fantastic. As you can see, this building's getting destroyed as well. So, one thing that I noticed in the... Uh, in the uh, stats at the end of the battle, I don't think that killing units in buildings actually counts towards kills. So there was slightly less kills than what you would expect in this battle for both sides, really. But yeah, as you can see, he has pushed across the river again. But we do have plenty of forces this side to try and do some damage. Still focusing down the building. Trying to get that destroyed. He still has this lifeguard of foot across this side. Look at the glorious units. And these six pounders are focusing down my cannons. Trying to take them out. And I probably should have moved these guys. But as you can see, one of the horses is dead. And I didn't want to risk them glitching out on me again. Because that would have been even worse. He's got, his, he's got his militia in front now, which was a good decision by him, bringing the militia through. And I was going to bring my glorious old guard around the side as well. And he brings his hussars across the river to try and get rid of my chasseurs, which was a decent decision by him. But as you can see, we are going to be able to get some glorious shots into those chasseurs as he's bringing his uh, militia across as well to try and tank a few shots by me. Look at this. This is an absolutely epic battle. Glorious, glorious warfare on this left flank. Look at this. The smoke in the trees. And the dead bodies. Oh, wonderful. Look at them go. They're very loud as well, as you can tell. Very loud. Screaming as they fight. Just trying to find a good thumbnail here, guys. Okay. <laughs> as he comes forward, he brings his troops forward into melee. But as you can see, we've got our guys back into line now, ready to keep firing. And over on this flank, it was a bit of a cat and mouse battle with his Jaegers and his Musketeers. Um, and this building and my Swiss foot. As you can see, he brings his lifeguard foot up to try and take some shots at the Swiss foot. Which is very unfortunate. But here come the Russians. 
very good in melee, the Russians, as well. So you've always got to watch out for them. And here comes his general. And that rally was a really, really crucial rally. At this point, I was expecting his musketeers to rout, as well as his militia. But that rally really, really did some serious damage um, in terms of keeping those musketeers in the fight for as long as possible. Look at them fighting up on the hill, in the grass, in the shrubs, fighting amongst the shrubs. But it's surprising, this militia was down to 20 men and still did not rout, which was crazy to me. Look at them go. But as you can see, we managed to push the militia back. But here sir, comes his lifeguard, sir, Hussars. General, he's under attack. And as you can see, he managed to focus down my general and kill them. And that was another crucial part of the battle that really, really was a problem. And here come the lifeguard, Hussars. Into the battle. Fantastic. Some of them managing to get inside the squares, which is not a great, great thing for us. The old guard firing down the line over this side. Fantastic. Yes. A brutal battle over this side. You can see the fields of dead over here. And at this point, he really doesn't have that much left. Apart from these lifeguard of foot. Uh, but he still has these guys, these Russian Jaegers in here firing away. But because I threw away my cavalry so early oh, on... I couldn't charge them down. If I still had my cavalry here, it would have been a good idea to charge them into these boys and try and get rid of them. But yes, the battle rages on this side. Absolutely rages. My Swiss foot here taking some serious damage. Uh, six pounder horse artillery doing some damage as well. As you can see, they're reloading over here. Look at the smoke. And I brought my guys up to try and push them back so they had nowhere else to really run at this point. And the old guard ready for action. The glorious old guard ready to fire into the enemy. And he is overlapping his troops here a little bit. And as you can see, brings that lifeguard a foot forward to do some serious melee damage. Because they are going to be extremely good in melee. And that is a very good tactic by him because his, his advantage here is the melee. And you can see them charging in. Wonderful, glorious charge into my Fusiliers of the line. Look at them go. Chopping my Fusiliers down. Really, really strong charge by him. But luckily I have my young guard out at the back. Ready to fire into the lifeguard of foot. And of course the old guard here who are very strong in melee as well. But I'm kind of out of troops here. And you can see, if we'd managed to have this cannon, how crucial that would have been. If this cannon was here, they would not have been able to cross that river. It would have been a completely different scenario. Completely different. But as you can see, we've run out of troops basically at this point. And, uh, yeah, Swiss foot running, running. Oh, we missed the move. I tried to bring the Swiss foot around to try and flank around. And unfortunately, the lifeguard of foot were just too strong. Very strong in melee. Very strong in the battlefield. And at this point, I knew I was kind of done. It all happened so fast. It was so, so fast. But it was a very effective push by him. I just wish that this darn six-pounder horse artillery would have moved. And I think it would have been a completely different battle. Maybe a slower battle, maybe less action, but on the uh, on the same token of that, it would have been a uh, you know a lot closer in terms of keeping these guys alive, shredding him with canister shot. So yes, there the battle ends. And it was a very good, very fun battle. Look at these guys fighting continually to the end. The old guard get overrun. Our men are running, sir. Wow, there we are. There it goes. There was a couple of units that came back from routing. But of course, they are not going to be able to stand up to the might of the Russian Empire that remains. Look at the fields of dead in this area, guys. All across it. All the way over here. The cavalry fight at the beginning over here. 
Look at the fields of dead littering this area. The Swiss foot, the Russian Jaegers, even across this side, the lifeguard of foot, the Swiss guard, the Swiss foot as well. It has been an epic battle on Ligny once again. And as you can see, these guys are going to get a couple of shots off. And that is going to be the end for the French Empire at Ligny. But what an epic battle, guys. I hope you really enjoyed it. Good fun as well. Very good fun. Really good fun. Very quick and very brutal. And a lot of the time in Napoleon, you don't get that quick battles. Just because... You know, players want to play defensive. And I was very appreciative of this player wanting to play aggressive. And um, I also wanted to play aggressive, but round this way. But he just jumped the gun with me. And there's a couple of crucial moments. Losing those cannons was a big crucial moment. Um, leaving my cavalry in here for too long was a crucial moment. And him getting that rally off at the last minute was another absolutely crucial moment. Those are the three turning points, I'd say, of the battle. That led me to lose. But yes, as you can see, the Russian Empire reigns supreme. Reigns absolutely supreme. What a fantastic battle. Very fun. And as you can see, the losses and kills were not really adding up. So you can see, I lost 1,600, killed 1,000. But he lost 1,300. So this is really probably the kills. 1,600 and 1,000. Uh, 300 to me, 1,600 to him. But because of the buildings, they don't really count as kills. But yes, what a fantastic battle. What a great player. Very aggressive player. And I love to fight aggressive players uh, because I like to be aggressive myself. What an epic charge across the bridge at Ligny. What a fantastic battle. I hope you enjoyed, guys. Please do like, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I'll see you again on the next video video.